Well, hello there, my beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is Jonah. Today, we are breaking down some Overwatch League. This is a very, very, very old match. I wanted to talk about this, um, but I had to get this set up. Uh, this is Stat Bananas. Um, it's an incredible software for coaching. I wanted to take the time to do that. Plus, I've been, as so everyone know, I've been a little bit sick, a little bit down. So, I haven't had the time to talk about this. But this is something that happened against the... The, uh, uh, what's it called? The, um, Dallas Fuel versus the LA Gladiators match. Now, we're going to take a look at the strategy they use. We're going to take a look at the defensive side. We're going to run through what actually happens in the match, both by watching here. Also, I have made a cool little animation here at the bottom where we can see approximately by the information I have available, the movement of both teams. Talk a little bit about that. But first, I want to go through the strategy, what it happens, and this thing. So this is actually the team composition that the Dallas Fuel. The Dallas Fuel is the red team, the offensive team, and the LA Gladiators is the blue team. So every piece that's outside of the into this gray zone is dead or not not in game. Okay. Um, now I have the widow here and the soldier because AK plays both, and it's very common to kind of play both. He swaps the widow. Either because he, he didn't feel like he was going to value out it, or more likely because they weren't playing like this. Because the blue team, this is not the team composition of the of the LA Gladiators. This is a, another team composition, which is a little bit common to actually play on this map. So I want to, to talk about the how the defensive side here works. Then I want to talk about the offensive strategy and why it's such a good offensive strategy. Why it works so well and why you... Why, why it's so high IQ to play it like this because I will show you kind of what happens if you kind of don't do it like that and then we're gonna go through the entire VOD itself this will hopefully help you guys get a lot of understanding of how the game works now I move this payload uh, because you know it, it's irritating from time to time I'll move it a little bit forward so we have it there okay cool so this is a defensive setup this is this area right here I'll op I'll make sure I get a marker this area right here uh, very beautiful is called catwalk at least I call it catwalk. Um, I've heard other people call it other stuff. Some, I heard a guy call it banana once. I don't think this is should be called banana. But whatever. That's a different discussion. Essentially, this is an incredible powerful way of, of, of playing defensively. Because what it does is that it allows the defensive team to kind of deny this entire zone. Right? Everything from here and down to there. Everything in this box here. Um, in bet you can you, know, you can cut off all this inside of this blue box right now. It is kind of like unwanted territory. You can't really go here, right? So essentially, you can't really push the payload. If if this was not a dive comp, if the if the offensive team were running a death ball, right, they would be pushing this payload right here, right? They would be pushing the payload, and as soon as the payload got around the corner, they would get lit up, right? The, the soldier would, would break the shields, the Sinyala would mark them, the Winston would Tesla cannon, and the Diva could deny high ground, or, 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 right? And in general, the tank's jobs then would just be to deny space or deny this payload from moving, essentially trapping the enemy team in this death, because these three people, or especially these two, the soldier and the Sinyala, are kind of like the, the reason that that this shit is, is so dangerous, right? You could even swap this guy, uh, the Ana, for like a mercy to even damage push the soldier and make this living hell even more. So what essentially um, is happening is that when the the payload gets stopped here, they get you know marked, lit up, weakened, and then they die, and they will continue to do that. That will feed a lot of old shots, so they have tag visor, they can have nano, and they can sentence with the nice majority of the ultimates. So, of course, since, since as you then understand, it's very hard to play Death Ball against this. You normally have to rotate through server, then poke and fight from server. And even then, you're get, getting put at a disadvantage because you need a lot of time to remove at least these two guys, the Sinyara and the Soldier, and hopefully also the Ana needs to get removed, right? Because even if you even if the Ana is up here and these guys are, are not up here, right? The, the, the issue is that, you know, if we are holding here and we're holding like this... And you put up, let's say that your team puts up the shield, right, to block the damage here. Diana can sneak in a lot of nades into your backline. And then and heal denying, you know, both your tanks. And then both your tanks will die immediately. Again, to the to just a pure sh right, DPS output of the, of, the, uh, of the defensive team here. So, what people do, of course, to remove stuff from high gum, you go dive. So, dive is, of course, 
um, incredible on this first point. There's so much high ground control. It's also incredible on second and even third point um, because there's so many high grounds that you need to control and it's almost a must run dive on offense. So what you normally run, this is still it's still difficult to dive against a team composition like this, right? Because where are you going to dive from? Okay, if you if you rotate through server, you're going to get, you know, if you rotate your entire team, I'm just going to move to Winston, but let's just pretend that majority, like the is following, maybe the Genji following him, whatever, right? If the tanks rotate to server and the Trace is not in server even, she can back off if she wants to, whatever, right? You can get dive, you can get choked from server, and again, you will get poked from long range. So the, will, the Winston will be not at full health, he will be at low health, um... Uh, and when the Winston is a low health, he can't dive. On top of that, you know, he might ha have to use his bubble. The Diva will be here, but he will he will use her defense matrix to try to, to, to you know, uh, absorb a lot of the damage. And it will take a lot of poke damage, make it very difficult for them to dive, right? If they go for main, it's the very same thing. Again, the Winston and the Diva will choke them out, will deal pre apply pressure. If they even ignore them and decides to, okay, let's just dive this high ground, the travel time in between going around the corner, taking poke damage from these two, plus the the soldier, the the Sinjara, the Ana, if she wants to shoot at them, right, will do that. The diva has absolutely about no matrix. She, she has to burn the entire matrix just to block like micro missiles from their de for the defensive diva. So the Winston won't have any matrix in between this flight path and will again be low and weaken before he even lands here and gets to drop his bubble. So that's you know the, the issue with going main. You can go under. It's the same issue. The tanks will sit up here. They will choke them out. And if they decide to, you know, let's say, go main here and leap up here, or they decide to rotate to server, I moved uh, the wrong pieces. If you get, if you want to move to server, right, that also allows that something like the defense sit up here with the Sinjara, the soldier with sometimes a widow. Right, all of a sudden these are very diveable from the defensive team. Can can take out the Sinjara quite easily, especially when the, if their tracer is in server. Or if she's on this left side under them, they can, you know, take out the Sinjata, they can take out the soldier, the widow, whatever, right? Apply pressure, right? Remove their backline and then go back in to defend their own backline. But their own backline is, you know, they are fully capable of defending themselves. So the defensive team will have a lot of ultimates and it makes it incredibly difficult to actually dive this. Even if you go from this high ground, you take a lot of poke damage, right? The dealer can fly up, contest you, Winston can dive up if you want to, or he can dive straight on there, right? So it is, it's very difficult to dive against this, as you can see, right? Because you normally get weak and you take a lot of damage and you, you get, what can I say? You get almost screwed over. Really, wherever you go, your dive tanks get super weak. So it's difficult to play against. But therefore, the, the Dallas Fuel has this amazing strategy that I love. So what they're doing, instead of uh, damage boosting, I'll just move these guys back down. Okay, so these guys are like pushing, the tanks are pushing the payload. Um... It's very difficult to move the pieces all the time. Okay, the tanks are pushing the payload to around here, right? The, the Sinjara set up on high ground, the soldier set up on high ground, which one ever he wants, right? And the Genji's job is essentially to poke these tanks. He's been poking these tanks with the damage boost of the Mercy the entire time. On top of that, since he's poking the tanks, who is healing the tanks? It's not the Sinjara, it's the Ana. The Hana heals the tank. The Tracer normally gets the orb from the Sense, so she normally has Sense orb, or orb, of, or orb of Harmony to heal her. And even if he were trying to heal their tanks, you know, for extra, you know, relief, um, the, the Ana would outdo majorly of that. So the Ana is getting a lot of ult charge, but the Sinjara is not getting a lot of ult charge, at least, you know, by by default, right? He's not really getting a lot of ult charge. And that's, you know, a part of the big issue that they will, that the, the, the Dallas Fuel or the Offense team, whoever that is, is really focusing on building Dragon Blade, and they will build Dragon Blade incredibly fast, and we will see in the VOD, but the defensive team will not be able to match that with Transcendence. And then it goes, right? It's then, you know, you can dive with a Dragon Blade ready to go. That's that's the Transcendence. You can dive with Dragon Blade on this high ground, right? Your tanks will dive in just to peel and protect the Genji, and the defensive team will not have the time, even though these the tanks might be a little bit weak, they won't even have the time to nuke these guys, because the Genji will already be start cutting and dashing around, and wiping the three players up here. And this is where it becomes, what can I say, almost complicated, or not complicated, but this is where this becomes so awesome, and this will teach you guys a little bit about old economy, and, and you know, staggers. A lot of people believe that the best thing is to just, like, wipe everyone at the same time. A lot of people think that for some reason that's the cool because you you kill the enemy team the fastest possible, right? So if we can kill 
all of these six at the same time immediately, then that's the best for us. But that's not 100% true. First, let's let's talk about ultimate charge. Ascendant and, uh, and a Genji, you can think about them approximately. If they do about the same amount of work uh, for their, their respective roles, of course, um, the Genji and the Senyata build a one-to-one -one in ultimate. So we they have trance when we have blade. That's why Senyata is so goddamn irritating if you ever have played Genji. Um, so every time he has blade, he will have trance, and then it's kind of like, uh, you try to blade someone, I'll just like trance that, right? And remember, the soldier won't really build that much tank visor because people will say, "Well, we just tank visor the blade," um, because the tanks of the de of the attacking team or the Dallas Field is not really taking that much poke damage from him. So, one to one. But since we're damage boosting him and we're building this so fast because we're building on the tanks, the sense not really. Let's just be generous and say that the the, the Sen has uh, seventy percent old charge or sixty percent old charge when the, when Genji has his blade. Let's just say that's the case. At that point, okay. The Sen dies, and let's just say the Soldier dies, and the Ana dies, okay? Let's just say that they get all three. They're really, it's a really good blade, at least, maybe not the Ana dies, but at least these two guys get get taken down, right? The Sen and the Soldier dies. Then did the Sen get put in this dilemma? Okay, I have a lot of old charge. I have 60-70% old charge. And the Genji just uses his blade, so I will have my, my Transcendence, right? 70%. 80, 90, 100, right? So when the Genji has 30% on his new Dragon Blade, his second Dragon Blade, I will have my first Transcendence. So do I hold it, right? And and let the Genji build, you know, another 70% or whatever he has, right? Uh, left of his Ujjad. Do I let him build that and just hold my Transcendence and just wait until he gets that? Or do I burn this the next team fight to stop the, the ultimates of the enemy team, to stop the push of the enemy team? Right? Because if he decides to burn it, then the Senyata and the Genji will always be, you know, out of sync. So then you will always be like, okay, every time I use Blade, the Senyata will never have trance. Right? So you kind of put the, them in this fact that, okay, Senyata, you have to stagger your own old economy. You have to not build your ultimate. You have to have, you have to hold your ultimate, which, you know, as, as when you hold your ultimate in Overwatch, since it's 100%, you are wasting, you know, you're wasting kind of time on it, if you can, if you understand what I mean, because you're not building a new one. And if you're not then burning it, then you're kind of wasting it. Not not 100% how that works, but um, mentally, right? That's not how it, it, it realistically or practically works in the game, but you're wasting kind of time. So you kind of leave this this guy in into that whole, okay, I'm holding for the Dragon Blade. And if he does, then that means that a lot of time the attacking team, so for example, the attack visor, can can rain freely, right? And if he tag vice doesn't hit and they use trance, then it's like, okay, cool, then I get to get a free blade again. And therefore you can kind of snowball a little bit with ultimates. On top of that, if you get the wipe perfectly, not 100% perfectly, it's just like approximately perfectly, then you get, at best case scenario, you get two points for free. You get the first and the second, right? The blade does that this, that this choke here gets broken much easier. Which is kind of like the whole point. Like we we break this first chunk incredibly easy. The old economy is is, is like a little bit of a side bonus, and you kind of put this in in a little bit of a of a difficult uh, decision making scenario. On top of that, you can always you know add a good team. You can always say you know okay, but we can maybe maybe we can counter it with attack visor, right? We can counter the blade with attack visor, so you can counter their attack visor with trance, and then I'll counter the blade with a nano visor, and that way we can shut down two ultimates at the same time. Um, that's so fine enough, but especially if you let, let's say that you got those two, then there are, uh, or even all three of them, all these three are now dead, right? Then we go back down, and then we kill the Diva and the Winston. So the Diva and the Winston will get bad spawns when we cap, right? They push the payload all the way. They cap it, if I could be allowed to move the payload, there we go. They cap first point. The Diva and the Monkey and the, say, the Tracer as well, I said these three gets a bad spawn. These three gets the quote-unquote good spawn, the close spawn. Then these guys get staggered again, which again gives more ultimate shots to the attacking team, right? The Winston, the Diva, the Soldier, the Sinyata, whoever, the Genji, right? All of these guys get, you know, uh, get all get good ult shots off these three, and they break the first choke. They get to because of the staggers, they get to free push the first choke because the first choke is this. Like this is a dangerous choke for for you as a as a uh, what can I say as the offensive team. This is a very scary first choke because there's only two entrances after this gate closes you can get out from there or there you can get on the high grounds if you want to you can get out from here and here but you get out there or there either one of those doors and the enemy team 
Let me see if I go layers and I spawn in roofs, right? The enemy team can control this spaceship. They can control this high ground. They can even put, if if they are allowed to, so let's say that they wipe you here first time, right? Then they can set up the dive tanks on these high grounds, right? So they can dive you. They can they can poke from here. They can poke from spaceship. You know, they can poke from here if they want to. They can they can set up far back. So they get a lot of, of, of like, good opportunities to really stall this first choke, which is very difficult, which is one of the difficult... Um, chokes to break right but because you because you stagger the enemy team right because you stagger them you get a lot you get to push past this choke and maybe all the way around here right this is kind of like um this hill here is kind of where the second choke starts of the game which allows you also to again to take the spaceship so you are allowing so you get you're taking a lot of free space right you're not getting caught in this choke and winston can take this high ground you're the diva can take the high ground. Maybe because these are on the on the payload. This guy can take the high ground. The soldier can be allowed to fight on high ground here. The Sinyala can take a, a longer position. He can also go up on this high ground if he really wants to, right? And and de and then you are kind of like you, the, the the mercy can again pocket the Genji. So all of a sudden you guys can get high ground control. You can break this threat choke for free. That in itself is, is is really good. And as I said, if the Sinyala decide to hold his friend's sentence, then a lot of the time you know when you get into the real first uh the real first team right you had one team fight here where you got wiped by the blade then you got staggered so you didn't get a team fight here or right a really close team fight which is what you always want to get you always want you always want to try to see if you can get a a team fight right around you know this these areas right here you want to try to to get something done here slow down the payload by get time for the clock build your own ultimates back up right because the transcendent was on 70 percent uh, the, the visor was maybe at 50%, right? So you get to build all of your ultimates back up. So you can do a really good hold here on the third. And you're taking time with the clock. But since they got to free push this area, you are kind of forced to have maybe uh, Transcendence, your visor, right? You have your ultimate, but so does the enemy team. So these guys will now start committing with ultimates. And if then the defensive team is like, okay, we don't want to burn trans. We want to hold that for an upcoming blade. That allows the enemy team... To take advantage of them not having a defensive ultimate, wiping them and free pushing, uh, and free pushing, please, thank you, and free pushing the card back in, doing that they got two points for free. Now that's of course the, the best case scenario for the offensive team here. This is like the best case scenario. The Sinyala doesn't burn his transcendence because you want to hold it for the Genji Blade. Um, the the, the tech visor comes out for the enemy team, uh, for the defensive team, the attacking team. My bad. Right, and since they have so much space, they can work with a lot of time. They can take a lot of this and really put the defense team back on their heels. Right, they, they, their support lines is forced to fight very far back on these, and the offensive team is allowed to take you know on top of spaceship here. Right, take take up top here. They can't get to push up. He can dive fast, long into this Sinyala. He they can dive onto the point. They can push their support line while the defensive team is not allowed the space that they that they require to play this very efficient, especially with the team composition to have right if there's if they're getting you know kind of like pushed into these small very narrow very like tight areas that can be very difficult especially if they're not allowed really to control this high ground if they're not control allowed to control on the high ground and the enemy team the offense team who, who got to push up because they didn't contest the first area right gets to set up on the high ground then it can be very difficult to remove those guys again and giving the offense team almost a defense or a defensive advantage here right so that is the the whole idea behind this so you can see it's a very strong it, it allows you to break first zone better and it also messes up with the enemy old economy it can really mess with them right because even if all of these guys die and they burn and the the defensive team burn transcend to save them all of a sudden you're coming in with a dragon blade that is almost free right and you know they can vice on the dragon blade and then we can transcend this on our blade and right so you kind of you messes up the enemy old economy that you get two blade for one transcendence you get to break the first choke you get to potentially snowball the first choke here allowing you to get a good setup here on on the second point uh on the second uh well capture point yeah the second phase kind of this game getting a really good high ground Right, with a lot of space, a lot of room for you guys to work, forcing the enemy team in the defensive team into a, a more of a tight area, and then get to fight them in here. You know, with with a with a with an old economy that you kind of have, you know, a hands up in, right, an advantage in, potentially letting you to cap this second point almost for free, giving you a lot of time to work on this first choke, which is a difficult choke to break. Right, the first choke is a difficult, so these two first points right here. It's more for, you know, the defensive team is like, okay, if we can shave off a lot of time here, if we can, you know, if we can stop them, that's dope. 
but especially if we can you know get this to overtime and then get the second point to overtime they don't have that much time to really ruin us on third point especially if we force them to commit with a lot of ultimate here on the second choke then they don't have a lot of, then they have to build the ultimates again which hopefully does that they won't complete the map allowing the defensive team when it's their time to go on offense to do the similar thing just cap even further so that is um, essentially that what is going to go on and i want to show this in this match i want you guys very much to pay attention to effect right so you can see he plays the, the weather here and stuff like that right they're taking some space and you know the enemy team is allow are gonna play a little bit different they're gonna only play in server or play around server since they have sure for on sombra but look at look at the old chat right 25 to 25 right so the, the senyata is built no sorry the, the the sombra is building the same amount of speed about as the genji look at everyone else no one has really any ult charge whatsoever so the genji is really you know working for that old chat right he's damage boosted by the mercy he he's they're trying to make to give him the dragon blade really quickly and and it's very good right instead of damage boosting the widowmaker instead right the damage boosting effect right and you can see here right it's halfway already 47 percent to 40 10 on drop beat 30 on on the nano right uh, 12 on primal right 26 on the pulse bomb 10 on custos uh, transcendence right so even a cam which was widow got his infosite to only 30 percent before he swaps off to a soldier so this is you know incredibly how fast he can build that right and you can see if you saw that there right uh, effect goes here left side to poke their tanks in case their tanks are holding right Effect is going to go left side here under to to shoot at people if they're holding you know if their tanks are holding close to this door right here they're holding if they're holding here right denying this corner to get pushed right and, and really punishing people for running this corner right applying a little bit of pressure then the effect can be in here you know he can be shooting them and poking them a lot or he can also be poking people potentially on the high ground right so that is kind of you know the, the whole what can i say the whole idea of this and you're building dragon blade incredibly fast um, and, and, you know, Dallas Fuel here will be doing, we'll be seeing that uh, back again when I go back in this kind of play the animation. Um, that they are, they are playing incredibly well, right? They get this pick onto Asher, and that really allows them also to just like, okay, let's just capitalize on this. We don't need Blade. They're not playing on Catwalk anyway. They're playing around, uh, they're playing around the server, so they can choke. So they, they're kind of just like trying to choke out server room while allowing a lot of space for AKM to kind of work, right? And you can see it here, right? 70, 80, what is that, like, uh, bad resolution, 82, I think. I think that's 82% on his Dragon Blade, right? They're 64 on EMP, on EMP, right? They're 38 on drop, beat, 51 on, on Nano, right? They're not, they don't have anything. And, and in fact, already have so much ult as you almost have a Blade here, right? Ready to go. And that what makes it so strong, even with Asher, right, who was doing his very best, right, 89 to 84, he's doing his very best to keep up, and that's the Sombra, Sombra built his, his EMP, of course, incredibly fast, right, and now they got about the EMP and the Blade come, came out about the same time, 47 on Custos Transcendence, right, about halfway there, right, Drop Beat is about 53, they don't even have Nano, right, so they don't have any Ultimates and they would have Blade by now, right, of course, the, 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 the Dallas Fuel, the, they, they did a lot, they got a lot of space, which really uh, benefited. So let's go back into uh, Step Banana here and let's go all the way back. I hope this animation is okay. Um, actually, the first time that I've been playing this. So if I undo this. Okay, so this is essentially how the defensive team. You can't. This is why I'm very frustrated that Blizzard is not allowing us to get like some kind of spectator tool where we can like get the, the point, the, like the overview uh, in, a, in a file that I can download to my PC or. Uh, that I, I know somehow could, could be able to see from a top point view where they at least did the positioning is because this is like kind of like free balling it like hoping that uh, that's uh, xqc looks in the general direction of the defensive team and I can then kind of guess from how the, the the silhouette through the walls look that the, okay that is him and he's there or a cameraman who does a cinematic overview and I get to see their tanks, right? So this is essentially how it is set up. The Divas here just to poke a little bit. The Ana here is kind of, you know, heal. Hopefully maybe sleep one of these guys, right? Get a little bit of ult charge, right? Uh, and what we will see here, right? The Dallas will do something very, you know, common. They will be diving up here. Damage boosting effect. Um, working on here. I don't see what Custa and those guys are doing. Custa's probably going around to this card here. Probably keep a little bit distant to make sure that they don't dive super early. Same with uh, with Acam, he's probably keeping a little bit distance, and then he's gonna go out to this high ground, look for some snipes. 
picked, right? And they're allowing, you know, a lot of space, right? They, they, they don't want to get picked up very early. They don't have their own Widowmaker, they know this. They don't really need this space because they don't run a Soldier, they don't run a Widow, they don't run anything like that. So they don't really need this space, this is more just to like, okay, let's build some ultimate charge for the Diva if we can and for Diana, just for fun, right? So, the second stage is, of course, that, you know, they, they push them even further back. The Diva holds up here. Effect gets to get a lot of ultimate charge of the Diva. The Lucio goes up to speed with the back. And by the time this happened, the Ana has already rotated all the way into server where the Mega is hacked. Uh, the Sombra is probably doing some some stuff that I couldn't see. Asher is on this left side. He's on this left side, probably looking for a Senyata that hopefully would go on there. And their monkey... Um, I believe is somewhere around here on this corner still just waiting for the payload to get pushed see there's not much they can do anyway right then they get to push them even further the diva falls back she takes damage the, now there's uh, the loser goes into server with the diva so now there's three people already onto the into the server room again the tracer still looking to to get this flank and dallas fuel has now been you know letting gotten full control over this high ground with the diva effect is up here damage boosting getting out to poke it's a little bit difficult to zoom in the start, I believe, to, to get enough poke damage in because they all rotate to server and they came goes and swaps also to uh, a soldier. So they are also playing a little bit defensively here. At this point, you can just like poking, pushing the payload, don't really, you know, trying to go over aggressive because they are also waiting to uh, the soldiers to get back onto the high ground, right? This is also where Custa get the pick onto, um, onto Asher, leaving a pick and doing also that, okay, that they're the Winston... He doesn't have a dive to set up more. If if Asher was still here, you know, in theory, the, their monkey could leap up here, maybe pressure someone while Asher blinked behind and got in a lot of damage, hopefully getting a pick or two. But when he dies, right, the Dallas Fuel really start pushing them all into server. And this is where, you know, the defense of, of, uh, of the Gladiators really start collapsing because now they're all trapped in server. The tanks of the Dallas Fuel, which has superior healing right now, almost none, right, at least... They have superior healing in the way that they have this little choke where they can move freely around. The soldier get they can actually gets to set up over here with the Genji. The Genji gets to push up and they, they kind of trap them in this little choke where the, the tanks of the gladiators can't really push out to do anything. But they are trapped in here taking a lot of, of uh, almost unnecessary poke damage. Take a lot of damage. They kill, they dive in and they catch uh, the diva of the LA gladiators out on the staircase. Again... Now there's no, there's, you know, there's still the healing that they have, but they don't have DPS, they're, they're missing Asher, they don't have the, uh, the Diva, they're missing, they're missing their Diva, so they don't really have the same peeling, and now the, this is kind of lost, like, the, the, the Dallas Fuel has already been allowed to push the payload a lot, they, and they got to set up, even though their Sombra pushes Custa down from the high ground, uh, he will just get peeled by Mickey, because they have so many resources, and the Soldier got to set up on the high ground, meaning that, now it's kind of like, okay, so the gliders have to contest the point, or else they cap it. But they're kind of taking a lot of poke damage, they're taking a lot of damage, even though they have the healing to sustain through a lot of it. And taking a lot of damage, but they need to stop the cut. But they also need to deal with AKM, who's on the high ground with the soldier, but they can't really deal with AKM because they need to stop the point, because the point is getting pushed, but they are low, so they can't really push. So they kind of put in this, like, impossible scenario where it's like, okay, it's just lost. So what we'll be seeing here is that they're, that the Winston is going to, uh, with Lucy, is going to try to dive onto the point, um, stall it, hopefully try, maybe try to get a pick, and he's trying to pressure something, right? And he's going to get taken out here uh, together with the Lucio, and the Ana just disappears. I can't, I couldn't find her anywhere on the map, so I was expecting that she went all around, maybe up on the high ground, maybe she went in here and hid something, because she just disappeared on the map. I couldn't, I couldn't find any screenshot where she went. That's not very too much important, because now, finally... You know, they have EMP, their their Diva is coming back, their their Tracer is back already in position, but they lost the, the Winston, they lost the Lucio. So it doesn't really matter too much because this is also when, you know, they just lose everything. Um, so yeah, that is essentially uh, what happened in that match, as we can see. So they didn't get to execute the strategy as they really wanted to. They still got the Dragon Blade. Of it that they could use again to wipe second point and they uh that they can use right relative to you know, control the second point here by building it fast enough 
They didn't really get to execute the strategy because they didn't hold here, but what they instead of that did was get a pick on Azure, force them into server, and then control this area, right? So we saw very good high ground control, right? Which which is, is, is kind of what you have to do when you have someone like AKM, you really play it. They really play around AKM. They give AKM a high ground, then they deny this space here with their own tanks, forcing the enemy team into this little area. Doing that, they can't really dive. That they're taking a lot of damage, taking a lot of pressure. At the same time, they're just playing the objective. What they're gonna do about it? They're just they don't have anyone that can contest the objective. AKM is standing here free firing, so they need to deal with this AKM, but they can't deal with him. If they move out to deal with him, they will get shut down and killed, and they're already weak enough. So, really good um, high ground control from the side of Dallas Fuel. I just like the strategy that they set up in case someone decided to hold a uh, catwalk here, right, with the Widowmaker who can get snipe snipe lines, build Dragon Blade quickly, we can wipe them. And I think this is a very interesting way of thinking about Overwatch because it's not just, um, it's it's not just like, oh, uh, they're playing the game. It, it's like the, the default that like, okay, we, we are on purposely making sure that Effect is a loud space, that Effect can get a lot of poking and get his Dragon Blade really, really, really quickly. While you see the, someone like the Gladiators are more like, okay, let's just play around Mega, build EMP, and then win on EMP all the time, right? So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. This is a super long video. If you made it to the end, I, I mean, that's incredibly cool. Drop that down in the comments. Tell me that you made it to the end. I'll give you a heart. I also, uh, YouTube is suppressing some of my videos for some stupid reason. Uh, so not all of you guys are getting this video out there, so you can press the bell icon, but even if you do, you might not get them. So I think the best way to make sure that you always catch up to the videos, at least you get a notification that I made something. My video titling is normally always correct. Um, join our Discord server, follow me on Twitter, I'll link my videos on both places. And if you want to catch me live, if you want to ask me any questions, hit me up on Twitch, link down in the description. I love you guys very much, I hope that you guys can take care of yourself, okay? Because I love you, okay? And besides that, guys, have a lovely gaming experience. And keep the enemy in your crosshair. <laughs>